Hello, everybody. The Warriors overcame a sleepy first half against the Brooklyn Nets and stormed out of the gates after halftime with this stunning Kaminga dunk. This is the result of a classic Warriors play called Head Tap. It started with the Kevin Durant days and was picked up by Andrew Wiggins. This is the classic version of the Head Tap play. You've got the point guard enters the ball to the right side and then the ball swings across the top. That's all just the preliminaries. The main action is this guard is going to set this cross screen so Andrew Wiggins can cut across the paint. Good old Brad Wanamaker gets a piece of the defender. Wiggins crosses the lane. The defender is trailing. So Wiggins has nice deep position, easy post entry, and then Wiggins can turn and post up. There is a second option in the play. So as usual, the ball enters to the right side. The point guard set this cross screen. The ball's gonna swing all the way back across. Wiggins does wanna come across, but his defender is just on his side, keeping him out of the paint. This defender is a secondary wall. So this play has a built-in second option. Wiggins can go the other way and zipper straight to the top and get this pin down screen from the center and then get the ball. And in this option, the guard who set the cross screen follows to set another screen. So Wanamaker gives Wiggins a second screen. So now the Warriors have Jonathan Kaminga running head tap. Steph enters it to the right side and this ball is gonna swing all the way across to the left side. Jonathan Kaminga here runs the head tap play. So Steph Curry is gonna go all the way into the paint and set this cross screen. So when Wiggins runs this play, 90% of the time, he would take this cross screen and post up and get the entry pass. But the Warriors have Kaminga emphasizing the zipper option where he goes up to the top. And that's because they value this as a way to get Steph Curry setting a screen for Jonathan Kaminga. So here's Steph coming up to set this follow screen, but Vince Williams says, no baby, please don't go, I need you so much. Please baby, please, please. And he just blocks Steph from stepping up for the screen. Steph says, fine, if I can't go through you, then I'm just going to use you as a friendly fire screen against your own man. So JK attacks. Santi Aldama runs smack into his own man and has to spin off and go around both his friendly fire screen and Steph's screen. JK would have a free run to the basket, so that forces Jaron Jackson Jr. to rotate to stop this drive. That leaves Draymond Green free in the dunker spot, which means that Conchar has to drop down in order to cover Draymond, which leaves Andrew Wiggins completely open. JK reads this beautifully. He whips this pass, crisp, and on time to Wiggins. And that brings us back to tonight's play. The ball is going to swing across to the top over here. Steph is going to come over and set this cross screen for Kaminga. Kaminga was committed to zippering to the top here. He didn't even look for this cross screen. So he'll get this pinned down from Draymond. Steph will eventually come up and set the screen for Kaminga, but Steph's got to get all dramatic about it. He's just walking around aimlessly like, if you'd seen all the things I have, you'd have dead eyes too. And while he staggers around in an existential crisis, bammo, he explodes up to set the screen. This is just a really hard play to defend. Steph's defender is behind him because he was distracted by Steph's uh, French existentialism. And that means that this defender is really aware that Steph Curry is coming into the play. And just in case He's not aware. Steph gives him a little slap on the butt over here as he goes by. Cam Johnson feels that tap and thinks, do I smell French cigarettes and nihilism? Oh no, it's Steph Curry. Man, he's so inspirational. And he just gets paralyzed in place here. Mikael Bridges is busy following Steph Curry because no one ever got fired for following Steph Curry. And so JK just runs by both of these guys. This is really impressive. Nick Claxton, great shot blocker, but JK drives right at him and then soars just off to the side, gets in his hovercraft and he pivots in midair for this tremendous dunk. I think we'll probably see this at least once a game here on out. Let's wrap up with a quick celebration analysis. Here's Steph before the screen, putting on his beret and learning to mime and enjoying a glass of French nihilism. The bench seems to suspect nothing. In fact, Guy Santos makes the rookie mistake of turning away and saying something to Jerome Robinson while JK has the ball. Kaminga goes up. Did he make the first move here? The Jerome Robinson wins a prize for first person to celebrate. 
JK here in his hovercraft. Jerome Robinson is already in his celebration formation. He's kind of like got these, I'm the principal, everyone stay cool kind of vibe. So it's hard to notice his celebration sometimes. In the meantime, Guy Santos looks like he's going to be the first person to head tap, but it's not head tap the play. It's I'm patting my head to acknowledge that you just slammed a basketball against someone's skull. And Lester Quinones is beginning his head tap move. Good reflexes, both of you. That's what youth can do for you. And Trace Jackson Davis, uh, whoa. Okay, he is not doing mime in a box. He's going to put two hands up and do the raise the roof celebration. But look at the peer pressure. He starts doing raise the roof, but then he senses that everyone else is patting their heads. And mid raise the roof, ooh, smooth pivot. It looked like he meant it the entire time. And <laughs> look at him. He's trying to look innocent, so no one will question why. He's got his left hand raising the roof and the other hand tapping his head. Don't worry, Trace. You got two celebrations for the price of one. We won't tell a soul. 